Hello, welcome to the first session of a module on classical Armenian. My name is Daniel Culligan. I'm a Privat Dozent at the University of Cologne and a Heisenberg Fellow, working in the Department of Linguistics, mainly on Greek and classical Armenian. Hello, my name is Ronald Kim. I'm Associate Professor of Linguistics in the Faculty of English of Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań, Poland, and a Research Assistant in the Institute of Comparative Linguistics of Charles University in Prague. My research interests include Tocharian, Armenian, and other Indo-European languages, and I'm currently carrying out a research project from the grant agency of the Czech Republic on the verb in classical Armenian. In this video, we will give you a general introduction to the external history of the Armenian language, and Ron will start with the first part. Let's begin with the roadmap. As Daniel has said, I will begin with the external history of Armenian followed by the periodization of the language into Old, Middle, and Modern Armenian. Daniel will then present some of the earliest sources on the Armenians, including important dates, and then he will present the Armenian alphabet. And examples of early writing, I will conclude with another example of early writing in Armenian. When the Armenians enter history in the middle of the first millennium BC, uh, they are settled in the highlands of eastern Anatolia and the southern Caucasus. During the later first millennium AD, however, Armenian communities spread south and west along what was at that time the Byzantine Arab frontier, reaching the Mediterranean in Cilicia, now in southeastern Turkey. Armenians have also been present for centuries in many different lands, including Iran, cities such as Tabriz and the capital Tehran, and throughout the eastern Mediterranean, most famously the Armenian quarter of Jerusalem. Armenians have spread throughout Anatolia, including Constantinople, Istanbul, which, as the capital of the Ottoman Empire, was one of the major centers of Armenian culture and intellectual life. Throughout the Caucasus, including the Northern Caucasus, where Tiflis, modern Tbilisi, was another major center of Armenian culture. In Crimea, and finally, in Eastern Europe, in places such as Romania and uh, Galicia, in what is now Poland and Ukraine. This map shows the historical Armenian lands in Armenian language. Uh, this over here in dark red, this is the boundary of the modern Armenian Republic since 1991, formerly the Armenian SSR and the Soviet Union. The lands around it belonged briefly to the Armenian Republic right after World War I. These are the lands that were heavily settled by Armenians um, until 1915 and over here, on the Mediterranean, we have Cilicia, which I've already mentioned, which was home to an important kingdom in the later Middle Ages. This map shows the modern Republic of Armenia and its neighbors. Armenia is right here with its capital Yerevan, Turkey to its west, Azerbaijan to the east, Georgia to the north. Armenian is traditionally divided into three periods, Old, Middle, and Modern Armenian. Old or Classical Armenian is known in the Armenian language as Gerabar, the classical written language of the Bible and other works of the Oskedar or Voskedar Golden Age, i.e. the 5th and 6th centuries AD. This language was highly standardized. There is no detectable dialectal variation, with one possible exception, two variant forms of the verb for wither, tar shamim or taramim. Otherwise, it's very difficult to detect any dialectal variation, suggesting that this was a standardized literary language used by all the writers of that golden age. Middle Armenian is best known from the Armenian kingdom of Cilicia, which we have just seen on the historical map. That kingdom, from 1198 to 1375 AD, uh, was much influenced in its society and culture by the Western Crusaders, with whom they were in frequent contact through trade, intermarriage, and so on. Here on this map are the major centers of ancient Armenia. We see right here the ancient Urartian fortress of Erebuni, that's the oldest surviving site in modern Yerevan. To its west, Var Shapat, also known as Ejmiatzin, has been for over a millennium home to the Armenian church. Note also Garni, site of a very famous uh, Roman temple, the only one surviving in the territory of the former USSR, 
We have the medieval capital of Ani, famously known as City of a Thousand Churches, of which many ruins survive. Tekor, which you will be hearing about later from my colleague Daniel, uh, home to, until its destruction in the 1960s, the oldest surviving inscription in the Armenian language. This map here shows the Armenian kingdom of Cilicia, to which I have already referred, on the Mediterranean coast. Um, and for almost 200 years, this kingdom was home to a thriving literary scene. And as a result, most of our middle Armenian sources come not from today's Armenia, but from this kingdom of Cilicia. Uh, after it was conquered in 1375, uh, there was no significant Armenian state until the establishment of the first independent republic of Armenia in 1918. Modern Armenian dialects are conventionally divided into Eastern and Western. The Eastern dialects being spoken in what was until 1917 the Russian Empire and Persia, today's Iran. The Western dialects spoken in what was until World War I the Ottoman Empire. During the late 19th and early 20th centuries, two standards emerged, an Eastern in Tiflis, modern Tbilisi, and Yerevan, and a Western in the Ottoman Empire, centered on Constantinople. Standard Eastern Armenian is the official language of today's Republic of Armenia. Western Armenian was largely wiped out, sadly, in 1915 in its native territory, but continued to, uh, continues to be spoken by survivors of the Armenian Genocide and their descendants in the USA, France, Lebanon, and many other lands. This map here shows the dialect situation in 1915. You will see that the eastern dialects are represented here in green, the western dialects in various shades of beige and yellow. The traditional classification is based on the formation of the present, which will not mainly concern us here. In the eastern dialects, one says, for example, berum m for I carry. In the western dialects, something like gperem with a prefix for I carry. There are also some transitional dialects in between, which resist such easy classification. And note that many of the dialects listed on this map you know, were spoken off the map, such as those of Western Anatolia, or even Southern Russia, Austria-Hungary, or Iran. Daniel will now talk about some of the earliest sources on the Armenians, introduce the Armenian alphabet, and present some of the earliest examples of Armenian writing. Thanks, Ron. I will now talk about the earliest attestations of Armenians in antiquity. Our earliest sources about speakers of Armenian are Greek and Iranian. In the West, it's the Greek historiographer Herodotus who tells us that the Phrygians of Anatolia originally were neighbors of the Macedonians on the Balkans and that the Armenians are Phrygian settlers. You can see this here, uh, the quotation from Herodotus, Book 7, where he says that Armenioide katapafrugis esesakato eontes frigon apoikoi. So the Armenians who are settlers from Phrygia were armed like the Phrygians. And he tells us that the Macedonians say that the Phrygians were called Briges as long as they dwelt in Europe, where they were neighbors of the Macedonians. And then they changed their home to Asia and also changed their name. So there seems to be a close connection between these two peoples in antiquity. The same designation of Armenians is found in the East. In his large, uh, large inscription of Bisutun, uh, King Darius mentions both Armenia as one of the countries that he conquered and Armenians as his vassals or opponents. So we see this here on the first column of the Bisutun inscription, Ima Dachyava Tayamani Pati Aisha. These are the countries which fell to my lot. And then we get a long list of the countries. And among these we have uh, Yauna, that is the Ionians, uh, so the Greek speaking uh, population of Ionia. Uh, on the Anatolian coast, Mada, uh, the uh, media, and Armina, Armenia, part of the Iranian Empire at the time. The Armenians mentioned in the Bisutun inscription bear Iranian names. So, for example, we find a person called Dadushi, uh, so the brave one, literally, uh, which betrays the deep impact of Iranian, especially Parthian and Middle Persian that Ron has already talked about on Armenian language and culture. So here Darius proclaims there is an Armenian, uh, Dadushi Nama Armenia Manabandaka, uh, 
uh, my vessel, him I send to Armenia, avam adam freishayam arminam. So here we have both the person and the name of the country. So then he says to him, go forth, there is an army which is rebellious uh, and you shall defeat it. Uh, this is actually not very successful. This long-standing Iranian influence on Armenian is, of course, due to the rule of Iranian dynasties in Armenia. So from the Achaemenids in the 6th century BC uh, and Seleucids after Alexander the Great and the Arsacids up to the Sassanids uh, in the, uh, up to the 7th century uh, before the Arab invasion. Uh, of very large importance is also, uh, for Armenian identity, the adoption of Christianity as a state religion in the early 4th century, even before this happened in the Roman Empire under King Turdat. In the same century, in 387, Armenia was divided between the Roman and the Persian Empire, so between the Emperor Theodosius and Shapur III, with a larger part going to Persia. So that means that there was a consistent influence of Iranian. The loss of political independence was to some extent compensated for by religion and literature. So the pressure from the Iranian side to convert to the Sasanian state religion of Mazdaism and from the Byzantine side to follow their interpretation of Christianity created the need for an independent Armenian version of the Bible. The invention of the alphabet by Mesrop Mashtots in the early 5th century was the basis for the ensuing work of translating the Bible from Greek and Syriac into Armenian. And the conflict with the Sasanians uh, reached its first climax in 451 when the Armenian nobles revolted against the Shah Yazgerd II, who tried to enforce Mazdaism as a state religion in Armenia. With the Battle of Avarayar, the Armenians, led by Vardan Mamikonyan, secured religious freedom for the Armenians. And it was in the same year that uh, the Council of Chalcedon led to a split between the Byzantine and the Eastern Churches, including the Armenians and the Georgians, who declined uh, to uh, adopt the Diophysite Creed. Since this time, the Armenian Monophysite Church has been autonomous ever since. Now, let's have a look at the alphabet. The Armenian alphabet, invented for the translation of the Bible and evangelization uh, in more generally, has 36 letters. Around the 10th century, two more were added, an O for monophthongized classical au, and a letter F for loanwords, such as Frank, for example, the Franks, that is, the European Crusaders. Only capital letters were used at first in a type of writing called Yerkatagir, iron script. Minuscules developed after the 12th century. It is nearly a phonemic alphabet, insofar as each symbol represents a different phoneme, but not every phoneme is regularly written, especially the mid-central vowel, e, the schwa. Earliest specimens of the script are inscriptions in stone in the church of Tekor and on mosaic pavements excavated in Jerusalem. So here you can see what the alphabet looks like. Uh, the uh, Majuscules that were used at first only, so A, B, G, D, etc. Here you have the minuscules, so the uh, non capital letters. This is uh, the name of each letter in the Armenian alphabet, and here we give you a more or less um, adequate transliteration. I will talk about that later in a, in a moment. And here you can see that these letters are also used for numbers. So this is also something I'll come back to in a second. And here at the end of the alphabet, uh, with O and F, you see that these letters were added uh, later. So the original alphabet stopped here with the aspirate K. Now, the Greek alphabet was probably used as a model for this invention. This can be seen in various homologies, one might call them. The writing is from left to right, as in Greek. The order of letters follows that of the Greek alphabet with letters for phonemes absent from Greek interspersed. So you can see this here uh, on this slide very nicely that we have alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon and the same order of elements in the uh, Armenian version. And then in between, for example, the schwa um, that is not present in Greek. For that, we get an extra letter in the Armenian or for je, for which there is no corresponding uh, letter nor phoneme in uh, standard Greek or L uh, uh, and G, for example, and other letters. So um, like uh, the velarized L, for example, that is used here with lambda, but for the other L, we don't have this correspondence and so on. So we see that the sequence uh, corresponds largely to that of the Greek alphabet. 
also inform some letters correspond more or less to the Greek cursive writing. For example, the uh, B beta uh, looks a bit like the Greek beta. Um, and also the single digraph that we find in the Armenian alphabet, namely O, W, used to indicate the vowel U, follows of course the model of Greek Omicron Y. The letters uh, are also, as I said, used as symbols for numbers, as in Greek and other writing systems that uh, also took Greek as their example. However, while the basic structure seems to be modeled on Greek, for most signs there are no hard and fast correspondences elsewhere. So one gets the impression that uh, overall the script is a new invention of Mesrop Mashtots. Just a short note on transliteration here. There are various transliteration systems. Uh, uh, into Latin script, uh, usually by the addition of diacritics. So some authors transcribe the digraph I just mentioned, O, W, as U. Others, including us, uh, write O, W to maintain a one-to-one -one correspondence between the writing systems. Also, the aspirate affricates T and CH uh, are transliterated by some authors differently with a dot below and the vowels A and O either with a circumflex or a macron. Uh, one should note, however, that the macron in this case does not indicate phonemic vowel length. Armenian does not have such a system, uh, neither in the classical nor in the modern language. Another note on pronunciation. Um, the traditional pronunciation of classical Armenian as maintained by the Armenian churches, for example, and that's the one I also follow, reflects several post-classical sound changes that you can see in this table. Um, so let's have a look at that. Um, the uh, classical pronunciation of the word for church, for example, would be yekel uh, while the more traditional, let's say, church pronunciation would be yekel which uh, means that uh, word initial e becomes an additional glide in front of it, and the velarized l of classical Armenian has become a velar fricative r in this word. So we have yekeretsi, and on the other hand, ekeletsi. Uh, in the case of uh, Otten foot, the tr classical pronunciation was probably as I just said, while the traditional uh, church pronunciation would be Votten with an added V before the vowel uh, at the beginning. For Tsania, uh, and uh, the, so this re refers to the word final um, uh, diphthong I, we have uh, either the classical pronunciation as Tsaniai uh, and the traditional one as Tsania. Similarly, the diphthong uh, oi developed into ui uh, in non-final position in uh, the traditional pronunciation. So uh, I will say Luis and uh, my colleague Ron will say Lois. Um, and similarly for uh, the word, uh, the name for John, Johannes, so the uh, classical pronunciation would be Johannes and the uh, traditional one would be Hovanes, because in post-classical Armenian, word initial yod changed into an H. So both pronunciations are, of course, possible and allowable. Now to uh, early uh, evidence for writing in Armenian. The first evidence for Armenian writing is provided by inscriptions both in early medieval Armenia and in Jerusalem, where Armenian monasteries were established at least in the 6th uh, century. For example, uh, from the neighborhood of Musrara, an inscription was found in a rectangular room with an apse at the east end, close to the Damascus Gate. So here is a photograph of this inscription, and here you can see the text. So this is uh, a part of the uh, inscription found there and you can see the Armenian writing and the transliteration that we use here and the glossing uh, below this. So the text means roughly for the memory, so and the salvation of all Armenians, so here we have the uh, name that the Armenians give to themselves, Haik, um, in the genitive plural, and then uh, Zorots and Zanvans Tergite, uh, whose names, Zorots and Zanvans Tergite, Ter is the word for Lord, uh, Gite is the inherited word for to know, inherited from Protean European Voida, as it were. 
So this is a very early inscription. And the other one um, that uh, is uh, the one from Tekor, so uh, Ron has already mentioned this place, uh, that is Kars in uh, modern uh, Turkey. This was the oldest inscription of uh, Armenian that we had, which is unfortunately no longer uh, existent. Um, and here we can see uh, another nice example of early writing. So Sahak Kamsarakan Shinyat Zais Vukayaran, Sirbosak Siyur Bare Hosutsyan, Hosutsyun, sorry, Yev Bolor Asgiz, Yev Amusni, Yev Vordekats, Yev Sireliats. So let's just have a short look at this. Uh, so first we get the personal name Sahak. Kamsarakan Sahak is, of course, Isaak, the biblical name. Then we have Shinyats, he built an aorist form from Shinel to build. And then we have the object uh, Zeiss Vukayaran. Vuka is the word for um, the martyr. And Vukayaran is a derivative from that. So with the suffix Aran that usually marks places. Of course, this is an Iranian suffix. Um, so this is borrowed from Iranian into Armenian. Sirbosarksi, so of the holy uh, Sarkis or um, for his intercession, your bare Hosutsun, uh, so uh, this is Bari and Hosel to speak as a compound, so the benedictio as it were. Yev Bolor Azgis, Azg is the word for family, so and all his family. Yev Amusni, Amusin is the word for wife, and Vordik, uh, Vordekats is the diminutive form for of the word for son, Vordekats, and uh, Sireliats from Sireli, the beloved ones. And now Ron will present another fascinating specimen of early Armenian literacy. Thank you very much, Daniel. Let's look at the next text example. Because of their long tradition of writing in the native alphabet, Armenians throughout the ages and today are justly proud that they have used their own alphabet to write not only their own language, but other languages. For example, among Armenians living in eastern Anatolia who adopted the Turkish language in recent centuries, well, they sometimes wrote that Turkish language using Armenian letters. This is not a new practice, but goes all the way back to antiquity. And as a piece of evidence that the Armenian script, after its creation by Mesrop Mashtots, did not remain confined to just a few scholars or church officials, but quickly spread among all Armenian speakers, we can present this Greek papyrus in Armenian script from Egypt, dated to probably between the fifth and seventh centuries AD. This manuscript interestingly does not contain any Armenian words. It contains conversational phrases, basic verb conjugations, and word lists. In other words, it was a sort of phrase book in the Greek language used widely in Egypt at that time for resident Armenians, a kind of guidebook for those who were living there or conducting business. And this suggests rapid spread of the alphabet after its creation in the early fifth century. Let's look at an example. These are two excerpts from that manuscript, from that papyrus. The first line here reads something like dis, probably sevdis, u hrosto, hrostis u sevdo. You lie, I do not owe. You owe, I do not lie. Clearly a line that would have been useful for a merchant, someone who was always having to deal with these kinds of situations involving bartering for uh, bargaining for prices or so on. The next line, epuisen pos puis pos hodevomen dikson me odontin. And that corresponds to Greek in the pronunciation of that time, epuisen pos puis pos hodevomen dikson me odontin. He made. How do you make? Notice different verb forms useful for someone who did not actually know Greek but had to communicate. Where do we go? Show me the road. So it's this kind of document that shows us that the alphabet very quickly spread. And in fact, there must have been a relatively high rate of literacy among Armenian speakers very soon within the first couple of centuries after the creation of the alphabet. Shnor Hakadutyun, thank you for your attention. This concludes the first video in the introduction.